Welcome to Take Back Chicago. My name is Rosemary Vega, and I am a member of Bickerdike Redevelopment Corporation. Dedicated to the fight for affordable housing. And you guys know how furious I am about education in Humble Park. What's up, Chicago? My name is Brandon Johnson. I'm a high school teacher, and I'm a member of the greatest union to ever walk the face of the earth, the Chicago Teachers Union. Hello, everyone. My name is Harry Nunez, and I'm a student at Amundsen High School, and I'm here with Logan Square Neighborhood Association. Good evening. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? My name is Amisha Patel and I'm Executive Director of Grassroots Collaborative. Welcome to Take Back Chicago. So tonight we have over 30 organizations. Some of the buses are still arriving. We're moving forward though and they're gonna join us shortly. We have 35 community and labor organizations united to Take Back Chicago. We've come together today to build a movement for social and economic justice in our city. For too long, we, the people, the neighborhoods, the communities of Chicago have been ignored. Our tax dollars go to line the pockets of wealthy downtown developers, while our schools, mental health clinics, and libraries close. Our wages drop our, and our rents skyrocket. We are a multiracial, multi-issue, citywide movement, and today we have a crowd of nearly 3,000 grassroots leaders united to take back Chicago. Now check it out, this is the city that makes big changes. This is the city that believes in social justice. I'm not quite feeling it, Chicago. I'm not feeling it yet. I need to know what kind of energy are we gonna take out of this room into the streets to send a message to the mayor of this city and his corporate greedy elitist friends that this city belongs to the people in this room. Black people, brown people, poor people, working class people, a city that works for everybody and not the few that wish to control and dictate what happens. This is our city. This is our city. This is our city, Chicago. Come on, come on, come on. This is our city. So we're gonna do roll call. Let's find out which organizations are here today so people can see just how strong this movement is. Let's go roll call, baby. My name is Marlon Chamberlain and I'm with the Community Renewal Society and we are 50 strong, ready to take back Chicago. Hi, I'm Stephanie Knighton. I'm with SEIU HCII, and we are 200 strong. My name is Vivian Zoe. I'm from One North Side, and we are 200 strong tonight to take back Chicago. Hello, my name is Monica Espinosa. I'm with Logan Square Neighborhood Association, and we're 100 strong, ready to take Chicago back. Peace, everyone. My name is Veronica. I'm here with Southside Together Organizing for Power, and we are here 50 strong to take back Chicago. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Hello, I'm Zelina Smith. I am a proud parent and member of Action Now. We are here to do what we do best. We are 150 strong, and we come here to represent and to let everyone hear that Action Now is in the house. Who are we? Action Now! Uh, 
Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Luisa. I'm with Bicker Dyke Redevelopment Corporation. I'm from Humble Park. And we are 100 strong tonight to take back Chicago. I want everybody to stand up and take back Chicago. Stand up. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Baraka Johnson, representing 50 Strong from the Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. And we're here to take back Chicago. Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. How's everybody doing tonight? My name is Robert Elie II. I'm with the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless. We are here, we are united, and we're ready to take back Chicago. And we are 150 strong. Take back Chicago. Yeah. Hello, my name is Jose Garcia. I'm with the Illinois Hunger Coalition. We're many strong, and we're here to take back Chicago. My name is Roilan Barrera. I'm with the Lasa Chicago, and we're 50 members strong. Woo! How y'all doing? My name is Jaleesa McClain, and I'm here with Southwest Organizing Project, and we're here to take back Chicago. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Take back Chicago. My name is Barry Romo, and I'm with the Metropolitan Tenants Organization. We're 50 strong, and we can't wait to take Chicago back. Good evening. My name is Juan Estrada. I am with the Bryant Park Neighborhood Council, and we are 120 to take back Chicago. My name is Gloria Higgins, and I'm from the Chicago Teachers Union. Tonight, we are 500 strong, and we are taking back Chicago. Hey, everybody, wave your hands in the air and act like you just don't care. What are we taking back? All right. I have one thing to say. If you're ready for a change, stand on your feet now. If you're ready for a change, make some noise. I am Bob Jackson from Rosa Seas Fire. Let's make some noise out here today. Thank you. Chicago in the fight for 15, and we're ready to take back Chicago. Hola, mi nombre es Nancy. Soy parte de la organización Lucha por 15 y estamos listos para tomar a Chicago. Se ve, se siente, la unión está presente. Se ve, se siente, la unión está presente. Se ve, se siente, la unión está presente. Hi, my name is Aisha Latiker. I'm with Kids Off the Block. We're from the far south side of Roseland. I just want to say we're here for one thing and one thing only. Let's take back our streets, take back our city. Let's turn up for peace. Why not? Let's do it. Let's take back Chicago. Woo! My name is Vicky. I'm from Pilsen Alliance. We are 100 strong. And who Chicago! Do you feel that? And there are even more organizations in the room. So let's give it up for the Anti-War Committee Chicago. Chicago Acts. Center of Change. Chicago Job with Justice. Fight for 15. Jewish Coalition on Urban Affairs. J 
Jewish Solidarity and Action for Schools. Lucha! National Nurses United. Northside Action for Justice. Northside Democrat Democracy for America. Parents for Teachers. Stand Up Chicago. Worker Center for Racial Justice. Let's give it up for all of us. We're gathered here today from all sides of the city, and you all should be sitting with your side tonight. Let's hear it for the West Side. North Side, let's give it up. Let's hear you, South Side. Southwest Side, can we make some noise? All right, to close out our, our roll call, honor, privilege to bring a sister to the stage who has seen several different administrations. She knows what fighting looks like. Come on, Chicago, show your love for Miss 92-year-old, but she only looks 37, Miss Lillian Drummond. Hello, brothers and sisters. You're looking good and ready to go to work. My name is Lillian Drummond from the South Austin Coalition and SEI. You, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> A long time ago, I worked at the Bisco and was active in the union, the Biscuit and Crackers Union. After I retired, I joined the South Austin Coalition and became an expert on utilities. Years ago, Big Jim, Big Jim Thompson signed a 12% plan for affordable utilities, and Pat Quinn signed a 6% plan at the South Austin Coalition three years ago. And now, for the good part, I, you say I'm 91, 92 years old. Okay? <laughs> and I am honored to be here with some of the toughest fighters best union leaders and grassroots community organizers you will ever meet. So I want to thank you all, and God bless you, and I want everybody to say, people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. God bless you all, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute baby. We got all these here ornament up here, honey. Put they butt to the fire. Okay? All right, put they butt to Let's the fire. Let's hear it up for Lillian Drummond. Lillian Drummond. Okay, okay, okay. Nice job. Thank you. Listen, we all know why we're here tonight. We're here because there is not only a need, but there is a demand to take back our city. There is a need, there's a demand to take back the streets of Chicago and put the trust back into the hands of the people, those that actually make up this city. For far too long, we've seen a corporate agenda that has worked to destroy public education at the hands of Rahm Emanuel and the politicians that are linked to him. There's a new day in Chicago that no longer are we gonna allow the corporate groups to dictate what our city looks like. And far too long, they have gotten away with shutting down our clinics, raising our rent, foreclosing upon our homes, robbing us of wages that we can't live off of. For far too long, we've seen our safety net auction off piece by piece by greedy corporations and those that are tied to the corporate elite. We need to have a say in the decision-making process that affects our schools, that affects our communities, that affects our neighborhoods. It's time to take Chicago back one block at a time, one house at a time. Let's go, Chicago. Let's take it back. All right. 
Next week, Mayor Emanuel is going to introduce his budget to the city council. Do we want a budget that works for our neighborhoods and communities? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> we got to keep the pressure on our eldermen to make sure they're not just going to sit back and let the budget pass if it's, if it's all just going to give us cuts, cuts, and more cuts to our social services. Because whose budget is it? Mine. Whose city is it? Now, now look, that's right, that's right. You're looking good, Chicago. Now, we're not just meeting here tonight, nearly 3,000 strong. Ladies and gentlemen, look around. Elected officials, look around, because we represent the tens of thousands of our brothers and sisters that are outside this auditorium that make up our communities. And when we leave here tonight, we're going to get back into our neighborhoods. Starting this Saturday, we're going to take our struggle to the streets. We're going door to door, and we're going to pick up the phone and talk to our neighbors about this. And we're going to take back Chicago one block at a time. Listen, we're going to the streets this Saturday. Who's coming with me? Come on, Chicago, who's coming with me to go to streets, to go to communities and neighborhoods to take our city back? Take our city back, Chicago. Tonight we stand in solidarity with all our allies across the country, taking actions against the government shutdown and the cuts, and the cuts programs that we all rely on. The corporate agenda that we are talking about in Chicago and in, and in Illinois is also behind this federal crisis, a crisis that all about slashing good jobs and destroying affordable housing and social services. Let's give it up for the National Day of Action, today against government shutdown. Tonight, we also stand in solidarity with nationwide struggles for the comprehensive immigration reform and all the demonstrations and civil disobedience actions that have occurred in Chicago and across the country over the last few days. Today, we declare no, not one more, no human being is illegal, not one more deportation, not one more. Now, speaking of people having a say, we're all going to have a say tonight. Throughout the night, we're going to send short text messages to 22333 in order to vote on policy proposals that sound right to us. And we're, gonna all, we're all going to be able to, to see everyone's responses up here on the screens as they come in. Now, again, the number we're going to all be texting Tonight is 22333, and you all see it up here in the screens. If anyone doesn't have a phone or just doesn't want to text, hold up the red, yellow, green, uh, green sheets of paper everyone should have under their chairs, and don't forget to tweet about the Take Back, Chica about Take Back Chicago if you have Twitter at hashtag Take Back Chai. Our tweets will, display, will be displayed on the, up on the screens behind the stage so we can all let each other know what kind of Chicago we want to live in. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna try to take this voting um, and do a little practice voting to see. All right, I know some of you all do not have unlimited text, so that's what the red cards are for, the orange. All right, it's a tough crowd tonight. So look, and everybody get your phones out. Let's get ready, let's get ready. Let's get your cards. If you got the cards, green, red, paper. And we're going to try something real simple, Chicago, real simple. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. So here's your first question, the text, 22333. Are the Bears going to win the Super Bowl this year? If so, text BEARS13 to 22333 or hold up your green paper if you think so. There we go. Like, there we go. Text no way 13 to 22333 or hold up your red paper if you think not. That's what happens when you just let anybody move into your city. Let's see what you all think. Where you at, Bears fans? The real ones.
So again, text BEARS13 to 22333. If you think they're going to win the Super Bowl, text NO WAY 13 to 22333. Hold up your green papers if you believe in the Chicago Bears. Hold up the red pieces of paper if apparently you were not born and raised in Chicago. Looks like the Bears gonna take this one. Now after you guys tell us how you feel tonight, we're gonna turn to our aldermen and state representatives and we're gonna ask some questions too. Each elected official is gonna respond with a yes or no answer only. At the end of the night, we will give you the opportunity to say a few words about what they're gonna do and how they're gonna help us take back Chicago. But until then, we ask that the aldermen and representatives limit themselves to a yes or no answer. Do you all agree? Do you all agree? If you were mayor, would you want to hear from 3,000 residents? What? Will you, if you guys were mayor, will you want to hear from 3,000 residents? Yup, me too. Now let's watch a short video that highlights the recent victories our movement has won. The threshold that we were arguing for was three quarters. So in effect, they wouldn't have the ability to strike. This new school year is beginning. There is an uprising taking hold in the city of Chicago. Tonight, the biggest teacher strike in America in a generation is underway. 29,000 teachers out on the picket lines I'm going to take back Chicago because I'm losing affordable housing uh, unit that I live in. I'm taking back Chicago because education matters. My children and my family were personally impacted and affected by school closings. It's time that we became who we are and we fight for what we deserve. That's why I want to take back Chicago. We've come a long way so far, and, we're, and we've shown 
the city and the world what we're capable of when we all come together and fight for our rights. Isn't that right, Alison A? This is what our power looks like. And today, we're going to see some more ongoing struggles our city is involved in right now. First, we're going to hear from Nadana Carter from Southside Together Organization, Organizing for Power, talking about the city budget and quality public services. If they close my clinic, I will die, cried Helen Morley as she pleaded with Mary Manuel when he officiated over a celebration of Chicago's 175th anniversary. Closely, coldly, he stared at her, looked, turned, and left the room. Her stressed heart gave out two months after the clinic closed, and she died. My name is Nadonna Carter. I live with a mental illness, and I am grateful to be able to utilize one of the six remaining public mental health clinics managed by the Chicago Department of Health. I am a part of Chicago's mental health movement. In 2011, all 50 Chicago aldermen voted to close six of the 12 remaining public mental health clinics. Managed by Chicago Department of Public Health, they chose to give grants to private mental health providers instead. Three of the clinics closed by the city were in neighborhoods hit hard by skyrocketing violence on their streets. These clinics had a long history and expertise in helping people cope with loss and trauma from violence. With times as hard as they are, people need these clinics more than ever before. Today, in many parts of Chicago, the public mental health clinics are so understaffed that a patient can only see their psychiatrist two or three times a year. And that's for only 20 minutes at a time. The three city psychiatrists that are on staff work all three clinics, work, I'm sorry, all six remaining clinics. And they handle anywhere from three to 4,000 clients every year. The clinic closures are just one example of the city's push to cut public services and give tax dollars to private corporations like Walmart. They've privatized They've privatized neighborhood clinics and homeless outreach services, and now they're talking about privatizing the city's breast cancer screening program. It is an obligation of Chicago's leaders to vote no on a budget that cuts mental health and other key social services. The city is destroying Chicago's safety net along with many people's lives, protecting the welfare of Chicago's working families and making this city safe for everyone should be the most important job for all public officials. Thank you. Thank you, Nadana. Listen, these are real lives that are impacted by these failed policies. This is not a cute demonstration so people can feel good. We don't need our aldermen and our state representatives and our state senators to try to intellectualize this problem away. Don't think you're too smart that we can't actually do right by people. Don't think that the people are too idiotic or dumb that you can't do right by people. These are real stories, real lives impacted by these policies. Don't go in and intellectualize it. Just do right by people. Thank you again. So now we're going to take a little poll to see how many people in this auditorium who've been hurt by the city's closure of our basic services. If your community does not have a mental health clinic, text no clinic to 22333 or hold up the red paper. If your clinic, if there's no clinic, you've been hurt by these closures, text no clinic to 22333 
or hold up the red paper, look around elected officials. These are your constituents. If your community doesn't have a library, text no library or hold up the yellow paper. And if your community doesn't have a park or enough green space, text no parks or hold up the green paper. If all of the above is true for your community, text all cut or hold up all the pieces of paper that you have in your hand. Look at, look at, look at, look at elected officials. The results are in and it's pretty clear, aren't they? Aren't they? It's clear. Our people are hurting. We need representation. People that love the west side of Chicago, the south side of Chicago, the north side of Chicago. Now we're going to hear from Carmen Flores, a community leader with the Illinois Hunger Coalition, to ask questions to our aldermen. Carmen. Uh, hi, I'm Carmen Flores from the Illinois Hunger Coalition. We will prioritize and fight for the city budget that include no cuts to essential services and no privatization. Please respond yes or no. To my representative. It says hi. The question is, would you present uh, for, uh, patronize and fight the city budget and include no cut to essential services and no privatization? Respond yes or no. Yes, I will. Say no more. I'm here tonight. It explains it all. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes. Yes. C. Claudia, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm not an alderman. Sorry. I don't. Okay. Okay. If you said yes, we are glad that you will be on standing with us against more cuts and privatization and will be watching. That's and right. thank you. If you said no, give me one second. If you say no, we regret that some of you will not commit to stand with us and will prom promise that you, I mean, promise that we will work to raise that our people are awareness about issue and we will we'll continue to fight. Well, thank you, Carmen. Now we're gonna hear from Francie Rico, a nursing home worker who's gonna tell us how important state funded programs are, why the rich aren't paying their fair share to support them, and what we can do about it.
But tonight, my brothers and sisters, I must say, I want to talk to you tonight about my vision for Chicago. For Chicago! Simply put, we must demand that the rich and the major corporations finally pay their fair share. I say that again. Executives making over a million dollars each year pay the same flat income taxes as a single mom making just $15,000 a year. You hear me? Only $15,000 a year. Uh -uh, that's not right. The banker. I said the banker should pay a higher rate. And a single mom, hear me, my brothers and my sisters, a single mom should pay a lower rate. On top of all of that, my brothers and my sisters, two thirds of the corporations in this state State pays zero. Corporate income taxes. Shame. But they find those loopholes and they don't pay a cent. Oh, I'm about to get started. I'm about to take it home now, my brothers and my sisters. It says when the rich and corporations don't pay their fair share, our programs, our programs go unfunded, and our working families got to pick up the tab and pay the price. But my brothers and my sisters, I know, I know because I work in a nursing home on the southeast side in the inner city of Chicago. And I see it for myself, what service cuts look like. I see it. And I worry, I worry my brothers and my sisters whether my own mother will be able I said be able to receive home care assistance when she needs it. Woo, I'm about to get mad. Oh, I'm about to get mad. You know why I'm about to get mad? Because Chicago is at a crossroad right now. And the question we must ask we must ask is, what kind of city, what kind of city will we become? Will we be a world-class city with a thriving middle class or a first-rate education system and a secure place to raise a family and retire. I'm scared now, my brothers and my sisters. Or will we be a city dominated by the rich and corporate lights who dictates their selfish agenda on working families? That's why I say I hear to say e 
enough. Enough is enough. Let me stop now. We want a public record of which corporations are paying their fair share of taxes. I said a list. Let me stop. It's time, my brothers and my sisters, for the rich to pay their share. I said, pay your share. Take back Chicago. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chicago. I, I don't know about you, but it looks like a movement is coming alive. I just saw Fannie Lou Hamer get off the stage in Francine. The spirit of our ancestors are alive today. We're taking back Chicago. Thank you, Francine. Now, look, let's do a quick survey. Real quick, if you make less than $182,000 per year, please raise your green piece of paper. If you make less than $182,000, it's a few people. On average, check this out, check this out. On average, you pay between 9 and 14% of your income in state and local taxes. Look at this slide. Thank you. Now, is there anyone in the room who makes more than a million dollars per year? Where are you? Where are you? Please raise your yellow paper. Okay, I see a couple of you millionaires real way in the back. Must be those greedy teachers making all that money. So check it out. If you make more than a million dollars a year, you pay less than 5% of your income in state and local taxes. Look at the slide. Now, I don't know if this is possible, but maybe you snuck in. Are there any corporations in the house tonight? The Democratic Party of Oak Park. Where, uh, the Democratic Party of Illinois, where are you? Any, any corporations, any corporations in the house? Okay, so check it out. If you snuck in here somehow, because you're too embarrassed to stand up, you're the ones with the big checks. Some of you are very tricky with these loopholes. Do you know that two thirds of corporations in Illinois pay no corporate income tax, you all? Now, I know you're all upset. Now, let's hear from the audience. Do you all think the corporations, the, particularly the rich people, should pay their fair share in taxes? Yep. Check it out. It looks like the fair tax has it. Ladies and gentlemen, we just found $6 billion for programs that we depend on. If the corporations actually pay their fair share, we wouldn't have to close the clinic. We wouldn't have to close schools. We wouldn't have to shut down trauma centers. We wouldn't have to pay people unlivable wages at Walmart and big corporations like that that are greedy and suck up the lives of our community. Now we're gonna hear from Crystal, a community leader from in Lase, in Little Village, and she has a question for you state representatives. That's you. State, rep state representatives, will you request a meeting with House Speaker Michael Madigan to advocate for the fair tax proposal, HJRCA 33? to be put on the ballot in 2014 so that we have the revenue need for a better, better Illinois? Please answer yes or no. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes, for sure. I'm a co-sponsor of the legislation, yes. We are glad that you will be fighting with us to pass a fair tax for Illinois. Are you guys ready to take back Chicago yet? Yeah. Now we're going to hear some spoken word poetry from Lamar Jordan, a Chicago artist, an educator, and a leader. Check, check. 
Good evening, Chicago. If y'all are feeling good tonight, make some noise. Can I get a can I get a my, can I get a wireless mic? Please and thank you. May I have a wireless mic? Who city? Who city? Who schools? Check, check, check. There we go. There we go. Chicago, how y'all feeling this evening? Y'all good? Yeah. All right. My name is Lamar Jordan. I am a rap artist, a spoken word poet, <laughs> a teaching artist uh, at this organization called Young Chicago Authors. I'm originally from the West Side, born and raised. Word. I was born and raised in Austin. Um, I just moved to Logan Square about four months ago. So, you know, I'm all over the city with it. And it's so amazing. It's such a blessing to be with all of y'all tonight. The love and the energy in this room is just amazing. And it's so dope to see us, the people, taking back the power that the powers that be try so hard to stifle so often. You know what I'm saying? So give it up for yourselves for being here for that. All right. So I'm gonna perform this poem and I wanna get out y'all way, but I just, I'm sure I'm, this ain't news to anybody, but y'all know that the fight doesn't end here, right? The fight, this is the beginning. Change only occurs when all of these people, when us, the people, go out into these communities and make this change happen, you know what I'm saying? So it's dope that we are all here, but it's more important to remember that this is not the end goal, all right? All right. So I'm gonna perform this poem and I'm gonna get y'all child way. It's about Chicago. Um, hope y'all dig it. So Al Green's Let's Stay Together furnishes a dance hall filled with over 50 rhythmless spoken word poets somewhere in South Florida. You see the classic ballad behooves you to move once the groove electric slides into your eardrum, the dance floor. Yeah, the dance floor was a vacant plateau urgent to be occupied, neglected by the rhythmless, standing off to the side who decide to twist, rock, and glide at their own personal leisure, creating sights, looking something like miniature seizures. It's, it's quite a sad thing to watch, y'all. Those who botch even the simplest of moves Groove next to those who haven't decided whether they want to nod their heads or bend their knees. So they do both. Not really at the same time, but <laughs> the effort was impressive. And in a sense, I expected to see better dancing before remembering that we're in a nightclub in the daytime. Surrounded by poets, people who are more constructive with their hands and nearly destructive with their feet. And finally, y'all, uh, I remember that we're in West Palm Beach. And in that moment, I realized how much I missed my city because I know had we been in Chicago, we would have been <laughs> stepping. You see, stepping is our ritual. Habitual like annual debates between Sox fans and Cubs fans, though this be the choreography of Kings, the unofficial homage to our history. We step as if we got live wire legs and time bomb toes. As soon as the rhythm grows onto us like a funky fungus infected with dance fever, we step as if we're trying to sketch the skylines to the dance floor below. What you know about that? This ain't the typical holdown you're accustomed to in your town. This is Shat Town. The greatest. the greatest city in the nation. And stepping is its physical representation, so we step no matter where we are. We use our feet to stamp the four stars, the two horizontal lines into any canvas we can find. We paint any town, the colors of the Chicago flag. We grab your attention at the slightest mention of any dope beat to step to. Any music Shat Town steppers can rap through, we go in. This is for the steppers. This is for the one, two, check up. Baby, let me know what's up. As soon as that needle scratch, scratch, scratches the record like a boogie and batch of chicken pox, we go in. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Wake up, wake up. 
What y'all know about that, Chicago? From sexual healing, to at your best you are love, to step in the name of love, all the way back to our greens, let's stay together, furnishing that dance hall filled with over 50 rhythmless spoken word poets somewhere in South Florida, Chicago's presence was felt because we stepped as if we knew the entire world would be watching Chicago. This is a city, y'all. Uh, this is a city in which every triumph we have ever been proud of has been coupled with a tragedy from which we are still trying to journey away. But, but in that moment, in that moment, y'all, we stepped because, because Chicagoans know that no matter how great nor small, every journey begins with a single <laughs> step. That's it, come on. While you're on your feet, while you're on your feet, let me hear you, who schools? Who schools? Who schools? Who city? Chicago, it is time, it is past time that we reclaim ownership over our schools. Now we're gonna hear from Mauro Ortega from Brighton Park, neighborhood leader, and Stephen Guy from Kenwood Oakland Community Organization about how schools closures have affected their communities. Hi, my name is Mauro Ortega. I'm with the Brighton Park Neighborhood Council on the southwest side of Chicago. My local high school, after surviving one of the largest school cuts in the nation, was cut of four million dollars. And my neighborhood in total lost 7.5 million dollars. Schools throughout the district are experiencing cuts of 20% or higher. How are we supposed to learn? While Mayor Emanuel is giving $50 million in subsides for the DePaul Arena and Navy Pier development. Is that right? Is that right? That ain't right. They're playing dangerous games with the lives of our children. With you, my friends, our families, our brothers, our sisters. How are we supposed to learn? They are playing dangerous games with our lives, of our students, our friends, our teachers. We need to stand up. Why are low-income areas in the black and Latino community having to face these struggles? Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Stand up, Chicago. I want to see everybody stand up. I want to see you fight. Yeah. Neighborhood schools take care of all students and deserve to be fully supported and funded. Hello, family. My name is Stephen Guy. I represent the Kenwood Coconut Community Organization and every child in the city of Chicago. I want to let you, I want to let you know that our hand-picked Board of Education voted to close over 50 schools. Second, they passed the largest budget cuts for high schools and elementary schools in the history of CPS. Then they laid off nearly 3,000 school workers this past summer. Can you believe that? Throughout the entire process, the community was never heard. The lack of community input is a civil rights issue. When most of the students impacted are black and Latino, it is outrageous that we are the only district without an elected representative school board. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Rahm Emanuel's got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Rahm Emanuel's got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Rahm Emanuel's got to go. Now, Rahm Emanuel's got to go. Okay, now, I want all my aldermen, first, all my CPS students, stand up. Teachers, stand up. Parents, 
Stand up. And now, Alderman, will you support the ordinance to declare and distribute a tip surplus filled and presented on the July 24th council meeting by working to get it discharged from the committee on rules and signing it if you haven't already? Please answer yes or no. Alderman, I want you to look into all the faces of our children out there and tell me, will you support the ordinance to declare and distribute a TIF surplus filed and presented at the July 24th council meeting by working to get it discharged from the community on rules and signing it if you haven't already? Please answer yes or no. Yes or no? Oh, yes. <laughs> Co-sponsor, yes. Yes. Signed it, yes. 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 Co-sponsor, yes. Yes. I'm a co-sponsor, yes. Old news of me, we already tried, yes. Signed it already, yes. The people have spoken. Now we want to hear from state representatives. During the veto session, will you support House Bill 2793, a bill sponsored by Elaine Sims, point elected, excuse me, LG Sims, point elected representative school board, by working to get the bill on the floor and voting yes? Please answer yes or no. Yes. One of three co-sponsors, yes. Yes, Cole Sparks. Oh, no. Glad I can see. Not me. We are glad that you will take a stand for the Chicago City Council and pass the TIF surplus. Also, we are glad that you will fight with us to get an elected representative school board. Thank you. We know that taking back Chicago will take real work. That is why we are all hate in the streets this Saturday, talking to our neighbors, taking back Chicago one block at a time. I'll be out talking to my neighbors this weekend. Will you all come with me? Are you guys going to hit the streets? Excellent. At your seats, you have orange color commitment cards. Please take a moment to fill it out. We are going to knock on doors, phone bank, and register voters so that our elected officials listen to us. Let us know what we can count on you to help take back Chicago. We will collect the cards at the end of the night. So fill them out and have them ready for me. Now we're gonna hear from Charles Austin, a pastor who works with Chicago Coalition for the Homeless to fight for affordable housing in Chicago. Good evening, Chicago. My name is Charles Austin. I'm a leader with the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless for the last seven years. I again became homeless three months ago on July 3rd, 2013, due to my loss of employment and my wife's reduced work hours at the temp agency. I'm currently living with a cousin and my wife is living with her sister. As a minister, I see the effects of affordable housing has on families, often leaving children without appropriate role models in the home and positive support systems, or families currently in a situation like my own. Despite sometimes working two and three part-time jobs, 
families still could not pay market rate rent. We must increase the number of affordable housing units in the city of Chicago. <laughs> For several reasons. To reduce crime and recidivism. To stabilize families and to restore hope to those who now feel hopeless. Now is the time to make Chicago a world-class city for all Chicagoans. So let's take back Chicago. Hi, my name is Norman Caseberg, and I'm a leader with One North Side. So Charles' story there exemplifies how Chicago is becoming less and less a place for regular folk to live and more a place for wealthy developers to make a fast buck. Over the past year and a half, we have lost over 2,500 units of SRO housing. That's housing for extremely low-income individuals and couples. Over half the renters across this city are paying more towards their rent than they can afford. And when families can't and individuals can't afford their housing, then they can't afford other basic necessities. In light of this, community groups have come together to preserve and create housing so that all people regardless of their limited income, can afford to live in Chicago. So we've developed a plan. It's called the Community Housing Plan, a plan that proposes that we as a city adequately invest in vacant and foreclosed properties, SROs, public housing, and the county land bank. And we hope that the city will adopt our platform as part of their next five-year housing plan. So the question, the question is, will you support the Community Housing Coalition's amendment to increase affordable housing in the city's five-year housing plan? Please answer yes or no. Yes. 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 Already signed on. Yes. 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 Yes, and add it to it. Thank you very much. So, all yeses, thank you for taking this first step in solving our city's affordable housing crisis. Thank you. Now I got a question for y'all. Who in this room needs a race? Who needs a race? Raise your hand. Well, if there's anyone who needs a race, it's all of us who are making minimum wage. Let's hear it for Mina White from Action Now about how we really need a raise in the minimum wage. Hello, everyone. My name is Mina White, and I'm a Chicago Public School student and a member of Action Now. As I see it, there's one issue underlying all of the problems in Chicago. One issue that no politician wants to face. That issue is poverty. Think about it. A family can barely make it by with a minimum wage of $8.25. With the income of about $17,000 a year, a family cannot survive without tons of government assistance. 
And even with that assistance, money is still tight. My mom works at Marshalls for $10 an hour, but she still can't make ends meet without government assistance. As of right now, we live in a low-income building on the south side, and it doesn't look like we'll be moving from there anytime soon. It isn't my mom's fault that she can't earn a living wage, and it isn't anyone's fault that poverty exists. Truth is, poverty is the result of a political and economic system that creates a lower class so that the rich can get richer. It's wrong that hardworking people with jobs are not being paid a decent living wage. I think a minimum wage of $15 an hour sounds reasonable. So we're calling for the city of Chicago to have any businesses that make over $50 million a year pay their workers a fair wage of $15 an hour. This way, all Chicagoans who work themselves to exhaustion each day can know that their work provided enough money for a roof over their heads, medical care, food, and clothing for their families. Is that too much to ask? Is that too much to ask? Now I know that you know that they know we all need jobs. The city always talks about how many good new jobs it's made downtown. Well, just last week, Grassroots Collaborative put out a report showing that three out of four jobs created in this way, well-paying jobs downtown, go to the suburbs. Where are their jobs in Inglewood? Where are the jobs in Humboldt Park? What about back of the yards? We need jobs in our communities. Now we're going to hear from Vicky Lugo, a member of Pilsen Alliance, who's going to tell us and remind us how hard it is to live and survive in Pilsen when you're only making $8.25. Chicago! Hi, my name is Vicky. I live in Pilsen, which, like most of our communities, was built with hard work. Unfortunately, living in the community we love is becoming almost impossible. The lack of affordable housing is pushing us out, but so is the lack of a living wage of living wage jobs that support our families. Rents and prices have gone up. But our wages are not keeping up with our expenses. Because on $8.25 an hour, we have to choose between food and rent. What kind of housing can we shoot for? At minimum wage, working 40 hours a week, a family could not afford to rent an apartment in Pilsen unless you want to live in the worst con possible conditions. My husband has had to set up for minimum wage many times. Since the wages are so low, he has had to work as many hours as he can get and sacrifice quality time with our family. He goes into a job often in terrible conditions, breaking his back for days on end so that he can barely afford to feed our family. I have a health condition that prevents me from working in many places, but I have to sacrifice myself as well so that we can make ends meet. With this minimum wage, we can't even afford health insurance for our families. Some people think that because we are hardworking families, we will just take anything. They are wrong. That's right, they're wrong. We're not afraid of working hard, but we will not allow employers to take advantage of us. We are here to demand a fair wage and to make a commitment to fight hard until we get it. We will get $15 an hour. Take back Chicago! Woo! Thank you, Mina. Thank you.
Thank you, Vicky. Thank you both. Now we're going to take a quick poll here. If you or someone you know is struggling to survive on 825 an hour, I want you to text NEED15. Text NEED15. You all still have that number, 22333, NEED15. Or hold up your red paper. Let's see what we got. Let's see how many people in this room could benefit from a higher minimum wage. Look at that. Look around Chicago. Well, it looks like we all need a raise. That's what it looks like to me. Alderman, will you introduce or co-sponsor a minimum wage ordinance of $15 an hour? Please answer yes or no. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 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 Yes, and paid sick days too. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yes, I already went into downtown businesses with the SAU asking for the $15 an hour. Been there, done it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. We're glad that you have agreed to help us raise the minimum wage, and we'll be following up with each of you. All right. Can we feel the power tonight? Who's with me? Do you think we got what it takes to take back Chicago? You think so? Now we know that even though there's almost 3,000 of us here, we all got lots of neighbors who aren't here tonight. Even though there are, there are some elected officials here tonight, there are all, a lot of more that didn't show up tonight. We got to let our neighbors know and let our elected officials know our visions of Chicago. Are we ready to go let our neighbors know what's up? All right, thank you, brothers and sisters. We got a little work to do. For the next three Saturdays, hundreds of us who are here in this room tonight are going to go out and knock on doors in our neighborhoods. We're going to make the phone calls. We're going to let people know what our vision is for this city. Together we are strong, ladies and gentlemen, and together we can help take back Chicago. But we all got to do it together. We all got to do it together. Are all of you ready to knock on some doors with me? Come on, for real, for real, for real. Are you all ready to make some phone calls with me? Come on, for real. Listen, I want to hear it. Come on. Are you ready? I want everyone to hold up the orange cars in front of you. Hold them up. On it, you'll see the dates that we're going to knock on some doors. You're going to see the dates that we're going to make some phone calls together. Please start filling out these cards right now, right now. Tell us, tell us when you're going to go knock on doors. Get the person sitting next to you to go with you on Saturday and ask this message and carry our vision to get our neighbors involved. Fill out those cards uh, while you're here. Let our elected officials know that we demand a city that works for all of us. After you fill out those cards, I want you to do this for me right now. I want you to text KNOCK, that's K-N-O-C-K, if you're ready to knock on some doors. Text PHONE, P-H-O-N-E, if you are ready to make some phone calls. Are you ready, Chicago? Come on, let's take it back. Let's take it back. Now let's hear from our elected officials and what they're going to do to help us take back Chicago. Aldermen and state representatives, please limit yourself to 45 seconds. I said 45 seconds. Let us know how you're going to take back Chicago. Good evening, I am State Representative Tony Berrios and I'm super excited to be here. I am 
fighting to take back Chicago. Over the summer, I met with SEIU and other unions. I've met with LSNA, you guys look awesome here, and other community groups. And I have continued to say that I am in support of all this legislation. So count me in to continue fighting for you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm State Representative Christian Mitchell, southeast side of Chicago, and I see some familiar faces. As a former organizer with Seoul, Southeast Siders Organized Union Liberation. Uh, I'm honored to stand here with you guys tonight, honored to be in support of the fair tax and closing corporate loopholes and increasing disclosure for our corporate partners. So I'm honored to fight with you guys and look forward to it. Thanks, guys. Good evening. I'm State Representative Derek Smith, and I just came out because I'm supporting you. You are the most important to us. And I support all the bills that you have co-sponsored, and I'm just looking forward to working with you more in the future. Thank you. Good evening. I am State Representative Ken Duncan, and I am 100% in support of your measures. I have fought for over 10 years on some of these basic issues. These are basic human rights issues. Housing, a, a living wage, respect, Access to jobs. That's who I am, that's who you are, that's who we are. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alderman Walter Burnett from the 27th Ward. I want you all to know that I know you. I know what you're capable of. I know what you can do. I know what you will do because I've done it with you and I'm gonna continue to be with you, thank you. Good evening, my name is Roderick Sawyer and I serve you as Alderman of the Sixth Ward. I want to continue to help you and help each other by supporting the privatization, transparency, and accountability ordinance. That will be our next victory together. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Ricardo Munoz, Alderman of the Fighting 22nd Ward, here with my crew from Enlace over here. Let's hear it for Enlace and all the other community groups that brothers and sisters, hermanos y hermanas, tenemos que trabajar por una ciudad que nos beneficia a nosotros. So we have to fight for a city that benefits all of us because this, this, this is what democracy looks like. Good evening. Alderman Tony folks of the 15 Ward has left the building. I didn't always have the pleasure of sitting up here. 2006, I was out there with you, and my mindset is still the same. It's still the same. When you all out there talking, what you talk about is what I talk about. What pisses you off, pisses me off. And, and to be honest with you, excuse me, mama, but I, they, I'm this close. They about this close from unleashing the bitch in me. Last time I was here, I thank you. I got your back, but I got, thank you for having my back. Peace. That's a tough act to follow. I'm John Arena from the 45th Ward. I'm gonna work with my council uh, friends, make sure no more privatization deals that stop giving away this city. Restore the social services we need in our neighborhoods and we will get an elected school board in Chicago. Woo. 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 I'm Bob Fioretti from the second ward of the city of Chicago. And I stand for what you stand for, and it's accountability. And everybody up here better be voting for what we said, because if they don't, we turn everyone out. We turn them out. Turn them out. I'm fired up, and you're ready to go. Fired up, 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 ready to go. 
fired up, ready to go. The winds of change are taking this city over in all 50 wards. And it's going to start here at Roosevelt and Halston. And from there, it goes south, it goes north, it goes east. It 45 seconds! Picker Dyke, I want to shout out to you. I'm Alderman Joe Moreno from the First Ward. Please, please help me in fighting this administration so we can increase affordable housing opportunities that are sorely needed in this community, especially on the north side. Especially on the north side. Thank you all for coming. Strength is in power, power is in strength. Alderman Scott Wagaspak, 32nd Ward. There's one set of policies in this city that hurt us, and there's another set that's gonna help us. You gotta make the choice. We got an election coming up pretty quick. We're gonna choose the policies that help all of us here tonight and all the people out there who are suffering. But you gotta vote with your feet. No more sitting down. We need to register people. We need to get out there. We need to get these policies heard by everybody across the city. And we got a short time frame to do it. So let's get out there. Elected school board, number one for me. Elected school board. Good evening, my name is Will Burns. I'm the alderman of the fourth ward of the city of Chicago. I am here, I am here because I believe poverty is a crime. And I believe that there's a crime being perpetrated against the people of Chicago. And I'm here to fight on behalf of the people who have been I'm here to fight on behalf of the people who have been punished for no fault of their own. Because they were born into a system that did not provide them with a ladder to opportunity. We're creating living wage jobs in the fourth ward. We will continue to do that, and I stand with you. The people united shall never be defeated. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Thanks for having me here today. My name is Nicholas Posado. I'm alderman of the 36th Ward. I know many of you recognize me out there. I was here with you yesterday. I'm here with you today, and I'll be here with you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pat Dowell. I'm the third ward alderman. And I wanted to say that this is a great session to hold everybody up here accountable. I've been with you on the vacant property ordinance. I support the elected school board. It was one of the co-sponsors of that. I support affordable housing, work with all the coalitions. Together, we can do things in this city, but it takes all of us working together. Thank you all. All right, Chicago, we've just heard from our elected officials. It's about time we're wrapping this up, but listen, you all. Listen, we're gonna take some action. Now, if we really want to take back Chicago tonight, tonight is only the beginning. We've got to take this energy that we have here in this room tonight back to our communities. We all got to do our part by knocking on the doors, making phone calls, and doing what is necessary to take back Chicago, one person at a time. Come on, you all. We're still ready to take back Chicago, right? Yeah. Whose city is this? Whose city is this? Listen, let's see those orange, orange cards. Hold them up. Make sure that those commitment cards are in front of you. Don't leave just yet. We got a few more seconds. Make sure you fill them out and drop them off in the bucket when it comes your way. Now, listen, we're going to hear from Rabbi Joshua Salter from the Southwest Side Organizing Project. Come on, Rabbi, let's hear it. People, the party's not over. We're still waiting on Governor Quinn to show up. He's on his way, so don't miss out. Have a seat, we still. Okay, the governor's here, so if you wanna stay. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Hello, my name is Rabbi Joshua Salter. I'm an organizer with Southwest Organizing Project. 
Tonight, it's been a blessing to stand with you all, the people of this great city, the city of Chicago. I know each of us has a story that can be told and the impacts of all these issues that are having on our lives. That's why we are here tonight, am I right? Am I right? We are being impacted negatively by all of these issues that are happening in our lives. I know we have many people of many faiths in this place, but we know that all of our faith tradition says that we should take care of the poor, the afflicted, and those who are less fortunate in our community. Every faith teaches us that we should stand with those who are less fortunate. Everybody agree with that? Anybody agree with that? And so when we help each other, we are doing a holy act. We are doing what God would have us to do. Everybody know we're doing this because God would have us to do what would be right and what would be just. Anybody agree with that? And when, and when we're doing opposite of that, then we're, we're, we're being greedy and we're being selfish. And God doesn't like when we're being greedy and being selfish. So we, we need to evolve to better human beings now. Now, here we are. If we are interested in doing holy work, because enough of you are interested in doing holy work, because you found your way out here in the rain this evening to stand with 2,000 of Chicagoans. Am I right? You, you just didn't come here to hear a good speech, I know. You came here to do some work, am I right? I'm going to tell you, faith without works is dead. Faith without works, so we're going to work with our feet now. We're going to work with our feet, and so we have orange cards this evening. Everybody hold up your orange cards. I'm going to ask you to make two commitments. I'm going to ask you to make a commitment with your feet with the orange cards, and then I'm going to ask you to dig in your pockets, and we're going to take up a donation. Do we have the buckets? Can you hold up the buckets, please? Please hold up the orange buckets. We're going to ask for donations of your feet, and we're going to ask for donations from your pockets. So I'm going to ask you to get it, go in your pocket and get some money out and put the orange cards in a bucket. And if you have any money, $5, $10, $15, $20, to put the money in the bucket as well as the orange card. God bless you, and that God keep you and sustain you. I'm going to ask us all to do some work now. It is important that we take back Chicago. This is how we begin to take back Chicago. You just can't do it just in one night. You got to do some work. So. God bless you, keep and sustain you. Amen. Thank you. And everybody, please hold up, because we still have we still have the governor Paquin. All right, but I want to hear some noise first. Are we ready to take back Chicago? Are we ready? Now we're going to hear from Miller Governor Paquin. much. Thank you. I hope we're all fired up, ready to go. We got to raise the minimum wage in Illinois. Everybody's in and nobody's left out, right? We got to make sure we have everybody, everybody who has decent health care. That's what the Affordable Care Act's all about. That's what President Obama's fought for. We got to make sure we enroll everyone who's eligible to make sure that they have decent health care. We also have to understand how important education is to jobs and to future in Illinois. And we got to invest in our education from early childhood to K-12, to to our community colleges, to our four-year universities, to our scholarships, to all of our students who are financially needing help in order to go to college. These are fundamental things that are important to everybody in our state. And I wanted to come here today because I was here 30 years ago at UIC, and we started a group called the Citizen Utility Board. It speaks up for consumers against high utility rates in those big utility companies. And we won that with grassroots citizen action. And that's what the Grassroots Collaborative is all about. You don't get changes from the big shots on top of the power heap. 
It bubbles up from grassroots community leaders, everyday people banding together for a cause they believe in. That's what I believe in. That's what you believe in. And together we'll make the will of the people the law of the land. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Now you know we saved the best for last. Now we're going to hear from 10-year-old whose voice of protest has rocked our nation. He's a fourth grader at Marcus Garvey Elementary School. This summer, he was on the front line of the struggle, speaking up against school closings and teacher layoffs at rallies throughout Chicago. In August, he even spoke at the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. So let's give it up for our very own Ashawn Johnson! Sean Johnson, I am I'm from Marcus Garvey School. I am in fourth grade. I am 10 years old now. Well, first thing that we did to get organized in our community was we signed petitions, we had rallies, we went out, let our community know we had the biggest turnouts at our meetings for everything. So we almost like did everything to help our schools to stay open. On May, I was on the front line, as Rosemary said, um, speaking. When I spoke, I was basically talking about how Mary Manuel was not treating us right or treating us fairly. He wasn't treating us fairly at all. Because it's no way possible that you close only 54 schools, but only in black neighborhoods, but you don't close no on the north side, then only on the south side and west side. That's unfair. So that's why that's why I like this organization, because when we take back Chicago, we are on the front line. We are confronting all our elected officials and Mary Emanuel and the Artemis. We, we are confronting them, because those are the people who voted for it. If they're not doing their jobs, then what, who are we voting for? Because as your campaign states, it sh that should be what you promised. Like Mr. Mary Emanuel said that he promised that he was going love the children, he was gonna take care of them. But you didn't do that, did you? No, you closed 50 schools in the meeting. So, it's just unfair how they're treating us and how they're just pushing us around. And that's why we need to get out and vote so we can have a good man that will care for our children and that will have our streets and build us up. That's why we that's why we need the people to take back Chicago. Uh, oh. hmm? What? Stop.